Between 8 to 15 percent of people have out-of-body experiences during their lifetime. What is an out-of-body experience? Quite simply, it means that the consciousness that one feels as located within the bounds of the body is suddenly relocated outside the body. Many people experience this while unconscious, during surgery or an illness, coming close to death, on the verge of sleep or sometimes for no seeming reason at all. They may hover in the room above their bodies looking down and seeing the emergency workers trying to revive them or loved ones crying over their unconscious bodies. They may find themselves flying through the skies and traveling great distances, floating over cities or visiting friends or relatives in countries far away. Many religious traditions point to this as a person's subtle body, which is capable of traveling well beyond the boundaries of the physical body. But could there be another explanation for the out-of-body experience? Is the person going to some place at all? Are they really traveling? Are they leaving their bodies? Stop for a moment and really examine movement by asking yourself this question. Do you move through the world or does the world move through you? Really consider this question for a moment. Do you ever go anywhere or does the world pass through you? You, as the still and unmoved consciousness. Put even more simply, are you in the world or is the world in you? In 2003, Olaf Blanke, a Swiss neuroscientist, while treating a woman for epilepsy, applied an electrical current to her brain. And immediately, she had the experience of floating in the corner of the room and looking down at her body. Olaf Blanke stimulated the brain of another patient and they had the extremely weird experience of being split into two selves. That is, looking at themselves, standing across the room, looking at themselves. Could it be the brain that creates the worlds that we apparently live in and are apparently moving through? Could it be the brain that produces a self that exists outside the body? That is to say, out of body experiences? Is the world itself merely a creation of the brain? Is movement merely a creation of the brain? And if it is not the brain, could the world or reality merely be a simulation, very similar to virtual reality? David Chalmers, an important contemporary philosopher of consciousness, suggests exactly that. Chalmers believes that there is an 80% chance that what we take to be the external world is merely a simulation. What about possibly by an alien artificial intelligence? an artificial intelligence that has developed to an extreme degree. Elon Musk agrees with David Chalmers, believing that it is more probable than not that we all exist in some sort of simulation. The website and subsequent documentary, A Glitch in the Matrix, posits the idea that we are living in a giant simulation that glitches occasionally and produces occurrences that cannot in any way be logically explained. The website a glitch in the matrix is full of reports from people who have supposedly experienced these bizarre and unexplainable clutches. Now, if some of these ideas are sounding familiar, you may have seen the 1999 film, The Matrix, starring Keanu Reeves. The main character Neo, played by Reeves, is shown reality as it really is. Not as in Earth 1999, but the ruined Earth of 2199, where complex artificial intelligence using harvested human bodies as a power source, creates the simulation of the vast synthetic and illusory world inhabited by Neo Reeves. The Matrix series of three films brings up some very interesting questions about philosophy, illusion, artificial intelligence, and the nature of reality. David Chalmers draws on the Matrix films to philosophical inquiry into questions about the nature of reality. Chalmers puts forward the notion of being invatted, disembodied brains floating in a scientist's vat, and asks, how do we know that our brains are not suspended in some vast matrix and that all that we experience is not information being fed to us? These questions and the ideas they stimulate are not merely limited to Western philosophy and science. Eastern philosophies, particularly Hinduism, suggests that this world is an illusion or maya, which must be seen through and transcended. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato in The Republic gives us his allegory of the cave in which captives are chained within a cave facing a wall and entranced by dancing shadows 
created by the light of a fire and the people who pass behind the captives and thus are unseen by them. The meaning of the allegory is that the captives are looking at an imaginary world of shadows while the real world, the true source of the shadow world, exists behind them, unseen and unrecognized. It is Friedrich Nietzsche who critiques Plato's whole line of thinking and conceiving of the nature of reality. Nietzsche seriously questions what he calls two-world metaphysics or the idea that this world is only a reflection of or a preparation for a more real world beyond. Nietzsche argues that this world is the only world we know and to discount or disregard this world for a possible world beyond, a world posited as more real, is to act in bad faith and to act unauthentically. According to Nietzsche, we must strive to affirm this world, we must say yes to this world in all its joys and sufferings. In other words, Nietzsche urges us not to reject or pass over this world in an attempt to realize an imaginary, more real world. Interestingly, David Chalmers comes to a similar conclusion in his reading of The Matrix. While most read the main character Neo as a Christ-like character who is trying to save humans from the artificial intelligence that has invaded human minds, Chalmers suggests that the real hero is Agent Smith, Neo's antagonist, whose mission is to save the world of The Matrix from those like Neo who wish to destroy it. Perhaps this is why Agent Smith is killed and resurrected in the second film. What is it about movies like The Matrix that can help us so profoundly inquire into and question the nature of reality? Perhaps it is because movies are a way in which we dream together in the dark and it is dreaming communally that connects us to the very origins of human consciousness. In ancient times, this was done by watching cave paintings of animals and people flickering and moving by the light of a fire as we were led by a shaman to understand and transcend the division between dream and reality. The relationship between movies or dreaming together in the dark and the nature of reality really begins with the modern era. With the modern era, we see the rise of cinema and at almost the same time, a profound change in our understanding of the nature of reality. In 1895 in France, the Lumiere brothers showed the first public screening of a projected film. Many of the viewers run from the room in terror at the reality of what they are seeing, a train steaming towards them. This event is considered the birth of cinema. Five short years later, in 1905, quantum theory is instigated by Max Planck, radically changing our view of physics. Only two years later, in 1907, Albert Einstein publishes his theory of relativity and changes not only our view of physics, but of reality itself. This radical change in our understanding of reality and the rise of cinema introduces a new consciousness and thus a new path of inquiry into the nature of reality. Cinema would prove to not only help to cultivate that questioning of reality, but to also reflect the reality and the very times in which the movies were made. Movies like Nosferatu, 1922, which would foretell the rise of Nazi Germany, or The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1956, which would play on Cold War fears, or Back the Dog 1997, which would predict the way in which a war initiated on falsehoods could be used to distract people from more important issues. But perhaps finally, movies are at their most effective and profound when they question the nature of reality. Films like Richard Linklater's Waking Life in 2001, or the many films based on the books of Philip K. Dick, Blade Runner 1982, Total Recall 1990, Screamers 1995, Impastor 2001, Minority Report 2002, Paycheck 2003, A Scanner Darkly 2006. There is even a spiritual allegory based on movies which suggests how we might understand reality. We are the screen of awareness upon which the movies of life plays. As the screen, we remain eternally free and untouched by all that seemingly happens on screen. For all that happens, is merely the play of light, like a movie.